maybe we can get going. Um, so thank you very much for joining us and welcome to the CCCM Practitioners Day. If you weren't with us this morning, um, we have like a packed schedule this afternoon. It's also the third of the last section of the CCCM Practitioners Day. Um, so I think we're just going to get going. Um, the first session is going to be uh, from a group of LSE students who've been working with UNHCR to do a research on um, HLP issues um, within CCCM work. So I'm going to hand over to Bailey, Darinya, and Rebecca. So over to you. Yes, thank you so much, Juan, and thank you everyone for having us. As Juan said, my name is Bailey, and I'm joined with by Rebecca Todd and Darinya and um, Penny Shiraja today, and we are grad students at the London School of Economics studying development management, and we have been working on some research for the CCCM cluster for the past six months. So we're really grateful for this opportunity to, to be with you all today and to learn from your presentations throughout the day and, and share what we've been learning as well. So next slide. Please. So we've been utilizing a case study approach and a mix of primary and secondary data. And we've been looking specifically at how HLP issues among IDPs can be addressed through the implementation of durable solutions. So Rebecca will now take us through our first case study. So the first we were looking at was Somalia, which faces a variety of HLP issues, the first of which Somalia is one of the fastest urbanizing countries in the world, which leads to a variety of poor living conditions for IDPs and also leads to shift in livelihoods that IDPs move from rural to urban areas and face um, different uh, careers there. The next is there is an epidemic of eviction within this country, um, mostly due to informal camps being created on private land that depend on the landlord, allowing them to stay there. This can greatly affect um, vulnerable populations, especially women and children, and often leads to lost assets. These issues are also affected by underlying local legal systems, which are largely inconsistent across the different states of Somalia and often rely on, on oral and customary systems. It's also rare for camps to be formally closed or handed off to governance, which causes integration into local government systems. TCCM as partners have done a variety of things to IDPs to understand their rights and know how to deal with eviction scenarios. Um, in addition, working on an index measure durable solutions that um, they know which people need to be targeted most help and which people um, have achieved a durable solution and can continue their life as normal. And then the last is strength and coordination through a variety of aspects, the first of which um, emphasizing government ownership and leadership in projects, the second um, involving stakeholders early on in the process, and then last a variety of area-based projects on both a regional and a neighborhood level. And our second case study was Yemen. We can get the Yemen slide up, thanks. Um, most IDP sites in Yemen are spontaneous and self-settled, meaning that there's no formal agreement with the landowner and many pieces of land have more than one owner. So because of this, evictions may occur at any time, often without prior notice. For those who do have an agreement with the landowner, there are continuously changing regulations surrounding land agreements, which creates the unpredictable nature of eviction notices. And there are many instances of IDPs working the lands that they reside on, creating a type of patronage relationship between themselves and their landlords. And this relationship can be exploitative as the landlords need the labor of the IDPs and want to maximize space for agricultural production, while the IDP tenants need the livelihood opportunities as well as the space to live on. And in some areas, especially Northern Yemen, rent prices are extremely high and caste-based discrimination can limit people's ability to obtain or reside on land. So because of this, 
these issues, many IDPs are forced to overcrowded and dangerous sites, like in a flood path or a waste dumping zone, or in public buildings, such as schools, and are disconnected from public services, like running water or access to close health care. The CCCM team has sought to respond to these issues in a number of ways, including mapping out high eviction risk areas and other needs and gaps and interventions. They've created the referral escalation system to organize and prioritize which issues get which level of support and engage with local government as it is essential to work with the local power structures in order for the changes to be sustainable. Uh, so the next country we're looking at is Nigeria. So Nigeria, the major HLP issues Nigeria face is eviction, local legal systems, and social factors. So on the eviction, <clears throat> IDPs face uh, poor living conditions, insecurity of tenure, flooding is a major issue, the Cameron Dan overflows, and uh, it is something that they all face in secondary occupation. Under local legal systems, um, the sub problems IDPs face are legal pluralism. So in Nigeria, there are three major um, systems, legal systems, which is statutory law, traditional law, and customary law. So there's often a clash between all of these three laws. And and there's also absence of civil authorities and competing authorities. The last one is social factors. Uh, so marginalized groups, um, for example, women, people with disabilities and children face more issues, uh, HLP issues than the others. They have challenges in paying rent. Um, they're often asked to pay six months rent in advance or have to pay high amount of rent. And also caste integration is another problem in Nigeria. Certain pe people who belong to a certain caste cannot integrate into a uh, areas because of their caste system. So CCCM in Nigeria achieves its objectives by promoting community-led initiatives and by providing technical support to local partners uh, and facilitating coordination among humanitarian um, actors. Additionally, CCCM also works towards a sustainable solution for displaced uh, uh, populations, excluding durable housing and livelihood opportunities. So CCCM in Nigeria has set up dispute resolution uh, committees uh, in return and relocation uh, sites to address HLP disputes. In addition to um, creating uh, legal advice and providing legal advice. They also uh, provide awareness and sensitization sessions on HLP issues. And as we've looked at all three of these separate cases, we've noticed common issues. Um, we've noticed some common issues, even though specifics may vary by context that are closely tied with the pursuit of durable solutions. Um, we've seen in all three cases that eviction is a huge issue and creates uncertainty and can perpetuate violence. Secure tenure is an important part of integration and each time an IVP is evicted, they're essentially forced to start the integration process over again. Eviction also impacts IDPs as they seek to return to their place of origin and may have to evict residents who have moved into their previous property. And in all three of these cases, the legal framework proved to be an important underlying aspect in, address, in addressing HLP issues with durable solutions. In each of these countries, a system of legal pluralism exists, and contradictions between the system have led to conflicts and instability of tenure, thus limiting the long-term durability of solutions. Uncertainty about who owns the land or the presence of multiple owners through the various systems can make it challenging for IDPs to purchase land or have secure leasing agreements. Lack of documentation can prevent both integration into local communities and return. Integration is impacted since IDPs may be challenged on their rights to dwell in a space and cannot prove that they have that right if they don't have the documentation. And return is impacted as IDPs may be unable to claim back property or land that previously belonged to them upon return. And they may have found others who have taken over their abandoned lands through a different system. Uh, and finally, many IDPs are unaware of the legal rights that they have in a country, and this lack of awareness can have harmful effects on durable solutions as well. Urbanization um, caused a lot of issues in the th these three countries as well, especially Somalia and Yemen. Um, many IDPs prefer integrating in urban areas due to the economic opportunities. 
but face poor living conditions and a lack of public services in these areas, which ultimately limits the feasibility of long-term integration. Um, in addition, there are many issues with coordination that have been faced in these countries. Many humanitarian partners have siloed responsibilities that focus on their areas of expertise, which lead to breakdowns in service provision um, between different areas, as well as, as during a transition from an emergency to a long-term response. Um, and it didn't can lead to input from the affected communities, um, either being lost in this process or not being shared to everyone who needs it. Uh, HLP issues are often entangled with economic hardship. So in all of the three case studies, uh, we saw that IDPs encountered problems because of financial limitations. So IDPs frequently have to pay high rate of rent in order to find safe housing, uh, which significantly hinders their ability to integrate into the community, uh, especially for those who have uh, experienced displacement and lost their a source of income due to displacement. IDP are also compelled to live in dangerous and crowded conditions, which ra raises their risk of um, illness and injury. This in return increases their healthcare cost and limits their ability to work and make a living. Uh, due to also the high cost of resolving HLP uh, disputes, the legal cost, IDPs are prevent, uh, prevented from defending their property rights and they struggle to return to their place of origin to start their lives all over again. Uh, marginalized groups experience additional challenges in relation to HOP issues. Um, and the customary legal systems, women, people with disabilities and minorities uh, face disadvantages. In all of the three case studies, we found out that women in particular face traditional customs that prevent them from establishing HLP rights. Uh, even though many households are headed by women, they face discrimination and, and are exploited by landlords. Uh, and also discrimination blocks minor, um, minorities and marginalized groups from um, resettling in certain neighborhoods. This stops them them from reintegrating or settling down in a new um, place. And while recognizing that these problems are huge and that there are vast complexities in trying to solve them, we have a few recommendations to share. Um, throughout our research, we learned that many of the HLP issues facing IDPs are created by preconditions of the conflict. So our first recommendation is around legal reforms um, and leveraging CCCM's position of influence to promote legal reforms, in particular through simplification and enforcement of a consistent legal system. Um, this has been exemplified in the Nigeria case, where the CCCM team has worked alongside the government in order to fund and ensure the issuance of official documentation that certifies recognized land ownership over competing claims. This is a costly process, but one that can be well worth it in providing secure tenure and enable successful implementation of both the durable solutions of local integration in return. Uh, so throughout the key informant interviews, uh, country programs expressed that they have uh, encountered difficulties working with partners due to the uh, lack of familiarity with uh, HOP issues. So our second recommendation is to increase increase training. Um, so training for partners is necessary so that they have a, a deep understanding of what HOP issues are and the channels, tools, and best practices they should use in monitoring, reporting, and responding to this issue. Uh, so as UNHCR is the cluster lead, they might take the role of organizing a training toolkit of all the materials available, curating materials to fill the gaps that are left in what is currently available and ensuring that the CCCM field team are equipped to use the materials um, in order to help partners build their capacity. In addition to equipping partners, it is also very important um, to train the IDPs themselves to know uh, and understand that their legal rights when it comes to HOP issues, what steps they should take in order to um, ensure their living, uh, increase sustainability to their living conditions and where they should turn for help when they are faced with such in issues or when their rights are violated. Um, and also it is important for uh, the CCCM team to conduct um, proper research to understand the most appropriate channel to reach the population effectively. In a study Oxfam conducted in Yemen, they found out that um, 
uh, phone calling and word of mouth is the most effective way to uh, disseminate disseminate information when it comes to humanitarian assistance. So CCCM has also to uh, have, has to research the most effective way when it comes to communication with uh, IDPs. Um, as far as coordination, obviously this is a very important foundation. Um, but our recommendation is to focus on enhancing coordination in three aspects. So first, to involve government actors and local partners, this can help increase the stability and long-term of projects or initiatives. Um, the next is implementing a variety of area-based approaches at different levels so that um, interventions can be tailored to local needs and take into account local conditions and context. And then last, to work early on with a variety of sectors, including development actors, to ensure that um, service is holistic and can easily transition into a long-run approach. And then lastly, um, there are already a variety of best practices and existing methods that exist. So maintaining, expanding those practices, especially systems of referral escalation and sharing information between humanitarian partners. And many of these issues around information sharing and training as well are being addressed by the CCCM toolkits, which Melina is about to share with us um, more about too. So that brings us to the end of our 15 minutes, but thank you all so much for the opportunity to share and to be with you today. Thank you so much, um, Bailey, Donia, and Rebecca. And, and you're right, I think it's a, it's a great setup also for our next presentation um, from Melina, who's been, um, you know, who's in the unenviable position of working between CCM cluster and the HLP um, AOR. And I see that Jim is here as well. If you want to give us a wave, Jim, um, do come and say hi. Um, so we have Melina who's going to be sharing some of the work we've been doing um, from CCCM Cluster and HLP AOR um, to develop the toolkit, um, HLP toolkit for CCCM practitioners. So over to you, Melina. Thank you. And for others, please feel free to um, post your questions in the chat. Um, and I'm sure some of our colleagues will be staying on as well to answer. Thanks.